Hello everybody, I am joined by Maria Konnikova, whom we've been catching up with for a few years now. If you guys don't know already, Maria's been doing a story, writing a book, in fact, about becoming a professional poker player for a year, working with Eric Seidel. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, so the idea was to play poker for a year, look at kind of some of its analogies as they as they compare to the rest of life in the world and as it turns out you've been in the scene for a little bit longer let's talk a little bit about the evolution of the project yeah well when I started the project I obviously didn't know anything about poker so I didn't really know what shape it was going to take it was all more experimental um, and luckily I have amazing and supportive editors um, who said you know what take your time. If it's going well, it's going well. And, you know, I had no idea that I would actually grow to love the game, that I would grow to kind of be better and better at the game, um, and that it would deepen. Because, you know, it's much easier to draw superficial comparisons, but then to the deeper you go, um, I think the better it becomes and the better the analogies become. But you actually have to spend time here. You can't just go in and out because poker doesn't work that way. It doesn't open up to you if you just kind of dip in and then leave. Well, I completely agree. And I think one of the ways that you initially started, I know, is working with Eric Seidel, who's an incredibly brilliant mind. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about both how your relationship with Eric has journeyed and also who are some other players and relationships that are sort of shifting your, your place in the space? Um, I think that my relationship with Eric has progressed from the point where I just basically would butcher hands and he would say, what did you do here and why? <laughs> um, to we actually discuss hands, both hands that I play and hands that he plays. Um, and oftentimes we'll watch you know, some of the super high roller streams to, either together or separately, but then discuss important hands and kind of talk through some of the thought processes of the different players, whether we agree with it or not. Um, I even got Eric into PO Solver so we can run simulations. <laughs> so, so that, um, you know, that's, Becoming so, more peers versus yeah. the... Well, I mean, listen, I'm never going to be Eric's peer. Um, let's just throw that out there because Eric's in a class of his own. He doesn't have very many peers, if any. <laughs> That's fair. Um, but at least someone who knows, what she, who knows how much she doesn't know and is still incredibly eager to learn. Um, and, I mean, the, the other person who's been, I think, most helpful to me throughout the journey is Phil Galfond, um, who's just the Amazing. most incredible person in the world. Yeah. Um, and I just, I'm in love with his family. His family is so wonderful. I know. Like Shout the most the beautiful Galmonts. baby. <laughs> like the most beautiful baby. Absolutely. I get chills every time. Absolutely. Um, can I, so that this is out there for perpetuity. So actually this past summer, um, during the World Series, um, we played tag team together, Eric, me, Phil, and Farah. So, and we were trying to figure out a team name because obviously that's the most important part of the strategy, yeah, definitely. right? Um, and we were all throwing around names and nothing quite felt right. And then Phil comes up with the New York Knits and we were the New York Knits. And I want everyone to know that the New York Knits <laughs> exist because it's such a great name. And I think now we always have to play tag team together every summer because that team name cannot die. No, a, a thousand percent. And you guys should definitely, it's a shock to me that this dream team did not ship a bracelet because that is a beautiful, beautiful team, both inside and out. That was me. So Eric played the entire first day because I was going deep in another event. Um, I was supposed to play day one, the first day, but I ended up um, making the final three tables of another event, so I couldn't. Um, and then um, I took over on day two, and I was very efficient. I busted us within 10 minutes. Perfect. You were hot, you know, hot <laughs> off of really another run. You can't be expected to come into every tournament like that. Well, I know you have to use the restroom, but I just really briefly want to know what can we expect in terms of, you know, you said that the project's taking a little bit longer. You're getting deeper. The analogies, I think, are going farther and farther down, down into the rabbit hole of both poker and life. I love, but um, what are your sort of expectations at this point for, for the book? We're all eagerly awaiting, of course. Um, so I'm actually hoping to turn, it, to turn the book into my editor um, in the next two months. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll get that wrapped up soon. I've been working really hard on it. Um, and so that would mean um, a 2020 publication, but not exactly sure when. And 
I, we've talked about this quite a lot on the podcast, slightly less on video, but Team Poker Stars seems to be partying with quite a lot of its pros. Yeah. And actually, you are a Team Poker Stars pro now, which congratulations, by the way. Um, but can we see this as some indication that potentially you might be a bigger part of this poker scene for a little while longer? We don't want to lose well, you yet. Well, as of now, I have no plans to leave. Great. Good. Well, we love seeing you. We want to see more of you, of course. Maria Konnikova, I'm Sarah Herring. You guys are with us on PokerNews.com.